What is up, people of the internet? My name is Avery, and I've just finished my first year of UBC Engineering. Of the 13 absolutely insane courses that I had to take in first year engineering, two of those courses were Math 100 and Math 101. In this video, I'm going to walk you through everything I wish I knew before I took these courses and some survival tips to help you get through them. And believe me, even though I took Calculus 12 in high school, there's still a lot that I wish I knew before taking Math 100 and 101. And just as a disclaimer here, everything mentioned in this video is based on my experience from taking Math 100 and 101 during the 2022-2023 school year. And all of the information in this video is subject to change in the future, so please don't get mad at me if your final exam is worth like 75% of your grade instead of 50 like I had it. And timestamps will be in the description below if you want to reference certain parts of this video again in the future. First off, what are Math 100 and Math 101 all about? In both of these courses, you'll get an introduction to the world of calculus in mathematics. Math 100 is all about differential calculus, and Math 101 is all about integral calculus. Both Math 100 and 101 have three flavors or styles to them, indicated by a letter after the course name, like Math 101A. Speaking of, first we've got the A flavor, which has applications to physical sciences and engineering. This is the flavor that all engineering students, like myself, had to take in first year. Then we've got the B flavor, which has applications to biological sciences. Most of the students in the Faculty of Science take this flavor. And last is the C flavor, which has applications to commerce and social sciences, and is the route that most of the Faculty of Arts students take. The only differences between these flavors of Math 100 and 101 are that your written assignment and exam questions may have questions that cater to the flavor of your course. For example, my final exam for Math 100 and one of my written assignments for Math 101 had some physics related questions on them. Alright, now that we know what we'll have to suffer through for 8 months, here's how your suffering in Math 100 and 101 will be structured for each week. In any given week, you'll have a 2 hour long large class lecture and a 1 hour long small class lecture. The large class lectures will be held in a lecture hall seating about 300 people or so and will be taught by a professor. In these large class lectures, you will learn the fundamental concepts that will be needed to complete the homework and assignments in the future. Depending on your professor, there's usually a mix of mathematical theory and basic practice problems that will be covered in each large class lecture. The small class lectures will be held in a classroom setting that can seat around 60 people or so and will be taught by a junior professor and a teaching assistant or TA. These small class lectures expand on the topics that were taught in the large class lectures, either by introducing new concepts that stem from the fundamental concepts or by doing small activities that extend your understanding of the fundamental concepts. Attendance in your small class lectures is mandatory and counts towards your participation grade. These small class lectures are also where you'll determine your groups for the written assignments, which I will talk more about later. In terms of homework and assignments, you'll be using a site called WebWork to complete weekly assignments and quizzes. For the WebWork assignments, there are typically around 20 questions or so, and there are unlimited attempts for most of these questions. These assignments are usually posted on Thursdays or Fridays and have a one week deadline and there are 10 of these to complete in each course. For the web work quizzes that open on Fridays, there are usually around five questions and these questions are taken right from the web work assignment itself, but with slightly different numbers. If you don't get a perfect score on your web work quiz, it will technically count as a zero in the math department's eyes, and you'll have to wait 12 hours before you can attempt the quiz again. In Math 100, the web work quizzes are due by the end of the weekend, while in Math 101, they're due by the end of the semester. There are 10 quizzes to be completed in the whole term for each course. 
In addition to the web work assignments and quizzes due each week, there are also five written assignments due every two weeks. These written assignments are done in groups of four to five people that you choose in your first small class lecture. They're usually posted on a Monday and are due the following Friday. In these written assignments are much more complex and intricate problems that push you to think about calculus differently. The concepts that are in the written assignments are well beyond what is taught in the lectures, so be prepared to spend 6 to 12 hours completing each written assignment. Your submissions for these written assignments must be typed up and are graded on mathematical correctness and formatting as well. Make sure to center your equations, put periods and commas after your equations, and center your equal signs because not doing any of these could mean some marks off. Now I'm going to talk about some of the concepts that you're going to learn in Math 100 and Math 101. If what I'm saying doesn't make any sense to you whatsoever at the moment, that's perfectly fine. Honestly, I didn't know that half of these concepts existed before I took these courses. Math 100 is all about differential calculus, which as a great oversimplification concerns the rate of change of something. It starts off with pre-calculus 12 concepts like functions and asymptotes, which gradually transitions into the concepts of limits and derivatives. With this base knowledge of derivatives and limits, you'll then learn about different differentiation techniques, optimization problems, some differential equations, and methods of approximating the slope of a tangent line. You'll then close off Math 100 by getting an introduction to second year calculus in the form of multivariable functions and partial derivatives. Math 101 is all about integral calculus, which is the branch of math that is concerned with summations and the area under a curve. It starts off by discussing Riemann sums and approximating the area under a curve, which then transitions into the definite integral, antiderivatives, and the fundamental theorem of calculus. You'll then learn more about different integration techniques and how to apply integration to differential equations. After that, most of the rest of the course will be dedicated to learning about convergence and divergence, sequences and series, and multiple tests that can be used to determine if something converges or not. The last bit of Math 101 will cover power series, Taylor series, and probability. Again, if what I just said meant absolutely nothing to you, don't be worried. Again, I didn't even know that half of this even existed before I took Math 100 and 101. In terms of the grading scheme for Math 100 and 101, here's the breakdown of what you'll be graded on and the weights associated with each item. First, we've got the web work assignments, of which you will have 10 of, and they are weighted at 10% of your final grade. The web work quizzes, which you will also have 10 of, are also weighted at 10%. Participation is weighted at another 10%, which includes small class attendance and the completion of two practice exams that are assigned to you partway through the term. Your written assignments, which you will have five of, are weighted at 20% of your final grade. At the end of the term, your lowest mark from your web work assignments and quizzes will be dropped, along with one small class participation. In terms of exams, you will have one final exam worth 50% of your final grade. Now, this is where things get a little interesting because of something called the benchmark system that was introduced in my year. It's a really dumb system in my opinion, but I will do my best to explain it to you in the simplest terms. So, the final exam is out of 100 marks, and is split into two parts worth 50 marks each. The first half of the exam has questions formatted similar to that of the web work assignments. In plain terms, more simple questions. The second half of the exam has questions that are more similar in difficulty to the written assignment questions. In plain terms again, more difficult questions, and a lot more work. Now, here's where the benchmark system comes into play. The benchmark system basically means that depending on what mark you get in section one of the final exam, it will unlock a benchmark grade that will determine the maximum grade that you're allowed to get in the course. 
let me try to explain some numbers now. So before going into the final exam, like imagine yourself outside the exam hall, your initial benchmark grade is 45%, which means that if you have a perfect mark on everything else except the final exam, and you just skip the final exam, the maximum grade that you can get is 45%. Staying with me so far? All right, now we're actually doing the final exam now and we're on section one, which has the webwork style questions and is out of 50 marks. If you score a 16 out of 50 on that section one of the final exam, you unlock the benchmark grade of 53%. In plain terms, you need a 16 out of 50 on section one in order to be able to pass the course. And to unlock the benchmark grade of 100%, you need at least a 25 out of 50 on section one of the final exam. This means that if you want anything higher than a 53% in math 100 and 101, you need at least a 25 out of 50 on the first section of the final. This benchmark system also applies to the webwork quizzes in Math 100, which I will quickly put up on screen right now so that I don't have to talk about it again. Honestly, I really hated the system and so did a lot of my friends, but you shouldn't really have to worry about it if you're like the average student going into engineering. Oh, and one note about the final exam for Math 101 specifically, I'm not going to guarantee that this will happen in future years, but for my year, we received a formula sheet for the exam that looked like this. And all I have to say was that we were applauding in the lecture hall when we found out about this, so I just hope that it will carry over into future years. Wow, explaining that benchmark system was much harder than some of the homework that I had to do this year. And to be honest, I really don't want to have to think about it again. So let's move on to some survival tips, advice, and some testimonials from my friends about Math 100 and Math 101. First, most people think that because they took Calculus 12 or AP Calculus in high school, that Math 100 and Math 101 will be a walk in the park. I'm going to make it very clear right now that this is not true at all. Yes, there will probably be concepts where you'll be like, hey, I saw that in high school. But as someone who had this thought many times and ended up getting complacent with the homework, all I have to say is don't get complacent. There will still be concepts, especially in Math 101, that you will have not seen or applied before and you need to be ready to learn these if you want to do well. The next survival tip is to actually do the homework, like actually do it. Yes, it is really tempting to photo math your question sometimes or just type your question into Symbol Lab or Wolfram Alpha to get the answer. But as someone who may or may not have done this in Math 100 and 101, I will say that it makes it so much harder to grasp the concepts in later in the course. Trust me on this one, you don't want to fall behind in these classes because it will be so hard to get caught up again. A good way to do this is to actually write out all of your work and to make it neat. You never know if someone's going to ask you for help and it won't help anyone if you don't remember how you got to your answer in the first place. This next tip has to do with optimizing when to do certain assignments based on the opening dates of the assignments. Webwork assignments usually open on Thursdays or Fridays and thus I would highly recommend working on these on the weekend. Same with the quizzes, they open on Fridays and I would highly suggest doing at least one attempt on that Friday to give you enough time for the 12 hour buffer to pass if you don't get a perfect score. Regarding studying for the final exam, there's nothing really better than doing some past exams to test your understanding. There's a website that I'll link below that has PDF copies of the past final exams for Math 100 and Math 101 and a website with solutions to these exams. I use these for my studying and although the formatting is slightly different, the questions are still applicable. Additionally, as someone who didn't take the assigned practice exams that the math department gave us that seriously, I recommend actually taking these practice exams seriously because they do give you a taste of exactly what to expect on the final exam. And lastly, regarding the written assignments, my advice is to start early, divide and conquer, and to work with other groups as well. These assignments can take quite a lot of time, especially if you get stuck on a certain question. So I'd recommend starting at least a week before the due date. Typically, there are usually around three to five big questions in each written assignment with two to six sub questions within each big question. 
Having all of your team members go through each question together is not really the most efficient way of going about things. So I'd recommend assigning certain questions for certain team members to focus on. And when you inevitably get stuck on a question in these written assignments, don't be afraid to work with other groups to come up with a solution. The math department actually encourages this. You can also go to the math learning center to get some ideas of how to get started on these problems. Oh, and speaking of additional resources like the Math Learning Center, there are also two textbooks that are associated with Math 100 and Math 101, the CLP1 and CLP2 textbooks respectively. These textbooks were made by UBC professors for UBC students and are free PDF downloads of additional explanations and practice problems that can be completed optionally in conjunction with the course content. To be fair, I never looked at them once during my whole first year, but they're there if you would like some extra practice. And that's about it for everything that you need to know before going into Math 100 and Math 101. I really, really hope this video can just help one person going into first year UBC engineering in the future, because I'll feel like my suffering in first year wasn't for nothing, especially in math, because math can be very painful a lot of the time. And as a thanks for sticking all the way to the end of the video, I'll let you know that my next video will be about Physics 157. As always, gently tap the like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell to be notified whenever I release a new video. With that being said, I hope this video brought you value, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.